Hello and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. It's happy hour and I'm so happy to have this person on because I used to watch him when he was on another network uh-huh. and I always thought he and I could be brother and sister. Yes, yeah. Bill Hemmer, welcome to Kennedy Saves <laughs> thank, the thank World. Thank you. What was that other network? Was that MTV or what was Yeah, that? I saw you on MTV. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you were on CNN. Yes. And yes, we indeed. have we Long have time. the same mole on our face. Yes, we do. Yeah. We match. That's absolutely right. So I got, I I got a bunch of them. They're like a constellation. That's okay. Side. Here, this is for you. Thank this you. This is what, a drink. What, what, what it, is, it is a twist on an old fashioned. So okay. um, the cocktail connoisseur who's mm. Uh, newsletter I devour every week, Peter Suderman. He's got a, a Substack newsletter called Cocktails of Suderman. Um, he's got two big bull mastiffs. One of them passed oh, away. Oh. So this was a cocktail that he crafted in honor of his dog, whom he nicknamed the big guy. The big but guy. he said this drink is the big handsome. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's he made it with Japanese whiskey. I made it with American bourbon uh, because you're an American Midwesterner. And cheers to you, Bill. Wow, Hammer. cheers. And what an interesting honor. Interesting life you've had. It's an orange peel in there. Mm-hmm. And what else? Let's see if we can. You know, I'm not a dark whiskey guy. That's okay. You are. It's it's mm. bourbon. You're you're from Ohio. You should like that. Mm-hmm. That's hot on fire, kid. Yeah, it's real good. It's good for, it burns everything out. Bill. What time is it? It's time to drink a mocktail. <laughs> it's a mocktail. No actual alcohol was harmed. It's in not. A, it's not terrible. But my preference is light liquors. I had no idea. No one told me. Yeah. Well, I'm a kettle one and tonic guy. If I had known Three that. Three limes. Oh. <laughs> if you asked. If I had known. Just just wait. Just you wait. I will I will craft. It's not terrible. No, of course it's not. It's, it's kind of sweet. Delightful. Well, you know, I like to throw a little something in mm. there. Um, mm. it, it is made with Thank a you, honey dear. simple syrup. It's a three to one honey to water ratio. Okay. Which is nice. It's organic, honey. You know, I was a bartender when I was 19. Were you really? So yeah. I want to know about your early jobs because you oh. told me the other day yeah. when we were on the outnumbered couch right. during a commercial break right. that you and I started at, a, at alternative radio stations. Yes, you're right. And that is what launched our broadcasting careers. Uh, I thought that was the coolest thing. I never be, knew that between about Between the age of 16 and 21, I had 19 jobs, one of which wow. was an underage bartender <laughs> on a floating restaurant on the Ohio River called the Four and a Half. I don't Kennedy. think I don't first think there of, are age first limits. First of all, though. back are then they? I didn't drink. Okay, okay. that Good was the you. first thing. Lovely. Um, second of all, I'm making and slinging these drinks. I, they must have been the worst tasting things in the entire restaurant. I, I don't know how they consumed them, but they did. Very few got sent back, and I don't know how. Well, that, but that was one. Have, of, you that have was a gift. one of the 19. That's how. But the radio job was uh, WOXY, mm-hmm. 97X, the future of rock and roll. Mm-hmm. And for your listeners and viewers' pleasure. Um, if you saw the movie Rain Man. Which I with, did recently. It was yeah. on oh, recently. Right on, it was right on. on. So I you see. saw the convertible going down yep. Central Parkway in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman's in the back seat because they're listening to the radio station. And he's saying, pow, the future of rock and roll, 97X. Pow. That was their tagline. It was the first alternative rock and roll station in America. That's amazing. And I knew zero about the music. Yes. But it, that there's nothing like trial by fire in two ways. One, you are forced to learn the music very quickly because yeah. you realize very quickly that music listeners are like sports fans. Fact. They know more than any broadcaster on earth and they will name check you. Yeah. They will call you out on anything. Number two, you certainly have to learn how to think on your feet when you're doing live radio. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But I had an advantage. I had the midnight to 6 a.m. shift. Yep, that's where I Saturdays. started as well. But nobody's listening, so I can make mistakes. That's it would great. be all right. I know, but there, there's something about that that's so wonderful because the people who are up, uh-huh. they're either working. They're committed. Tough jobs. Yeah. And, and they need someone there talking them through the night. Uh-huh. So it really means something to people working those shifts. Yeah. To have someone who's funny, someone who's got high energy, someone to carry them through. Like, yeah. you really develop a connection with your listeners. Well, I didn't know this. Or you've got I- someone who's, like, burying a body in the woods. Yeah, right. I didn't know the Smiths from the Beatles back then. Oh. I, I, Both British. Yeah. Right. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Ching, ching, ching. Mm-hmm. So that was that. That's amazing. So what was your first... There we go. Won't leave you hanging. Ever. So at 4 a.m. when everybody was asleep, mm-hmm. I broke away from the playlist and I would play Chrissy Hine, The Pretenders, Middle of the Road. Yeah, that's great. And that... You know why? It woke me up. Yes. That's... I, I had two hours to go. So you had your go-to song. Mm-hmm. Um, I would play... Anything like I, I usually played How Soon Is Now, like the, the seven minute version by the Smiths. If I had to go get someone in the lobby because I was the only one in the building 
in Burbank. Yeah. So I needed something <laughs> long enough. If, God forbid, my uh-huh. key card stopped working, right. I would still be able to get into yeah, the radio that, station smart. plenty of time. Yeah. But And I, I drank, like, a double big gulp of Dr. Uh-huh. Pepper, and that got me through. How'd night. you get to MTV? Uh, my boss at the radio station got in hired at, in L.A. at K-Rock, um, got hired at MTV they in heard New York. about in New York, and they heard about some of the promotions that he had done. They were getting a new slate of VJs in the fall. Uh, he was hired in May, uh-huh. and then he called me in July and was like, "How would you like to audition to be a VJ?" I'm like, "I am 19 years old. Of course, I would do that. I would I would punch my grandma for that opportunity." <laughs> so I flew to Portland. I punched grandma my grandma in understand. the face. She was fine with it. She's Romanian. She could take a punch. <laughs> right. Yep. And then he got the president of MTV to sign off, and I was hired. Mm, damn. How did you get from it's really good from overnight as a teenager? doing alternative music that you didn't know to cable news? Um, I took a job in Cincinnati making $9,000 a year as a sports producer. Nice. And then I left that job a couple years later making $12,000 a year. Solid. And uh, I turned 25, and I said, you know what? This isn't for me, and I really need to backpack around the world and get all this out of me. Oh, good for you. So I had $15,000, and I I knew if I didn't do it before I turned 30, I was going to have a midlife crisis. So I had my midlife crisis at the age of 26, and I backpacked around the world. Um, And it was all third world travel. You know, this is in Paris and London and Amsterdam. This is... China and Vietnam and Hong Kong, Nepal, wow. India, Middle East, Eastern Europe, and Russia. So I did that, and I came home, and I was an, uh, a, a news reporter in Cincinnati, and which I found to be a rather tedious job. Hear me out. Okay. Um, I was the low man on the totem pole. At 8 a.m., we had our meetings, and I always got the last assignment. Yeah. But what I found, Kennedy, is that we were covering either court cases or you, you, you start to understand how your community works. Mm-hmm. So how's the county work? How's the city work? How's the state work? I, I never knew any of that before. And I learned that over the next two years. How, you know, how does the trial work, et cetera? Gas prices, school levies, uh, you name it, right? And so I was able to put all that together between the travel and the news and the sports background yep. to get a job at CNN. See, I also think that sports is the sports and radio are the best foundation for broadcasting. Big time. I really, truly believe yeah. that because you are forced to learn so much about sports and you oh. have to develop an encyclopedic recall uh-huh. of that knowledge. See, I've, I have a different take on it. I think what the sports training does for a cable news anchor, which I have been for almost 30 years, wow. is that it teaches your brain to see images mm-hmm. and communicate out your mouth. Yes. Okay, and we do that every day. Car chases or breaking news or just to be able to go off prompter and yep. just go from the top of your head. And that's, I mean, how that's, that? that's how I kind of developed my style as a broadcaster was emulating sportscasters. Like guys I heard on sports talk and, you know, different sportscasters on TV. Uh-huh. I love their energy. Like they had energy and passion and they were telling you something and bottom lining it. And I was like, I want to do that, but with music. Yeah. Like, I want to do that, but with politics. And so I've always kind of emulated that. And, you know, it's like, it's it's interesting to me where people get their inspiration yeah. as broadcasters. Because you, you, you have to take from? it from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, this thing's kind of strong, actually. I know. It's like cough syrup. You knew that? Well, yeah. I mean, every cocktail What are you doing make, after this? Um, probably napping. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cheers. It's Friday, Bill. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't we? Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Somewhere it's Friday. Yes, that's absolutely right. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. All right. So what else? Um, what is your favorite college in Ohio? Wow. Miami University, Oxford, Ohio, hands down. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And your daughter's at Ohio University. That's right. Athens, Ohio. Yes. Big rivalry. I know. There Takes is... about three hours to get between the two. So Chad Pergram went uh-huh. to Miami Here of Ohio. Miami. Yeah. Yes. And he was telling me that when he was in college, he there was something on the front that was like, this is your brain. And it was you know, Miami of Ohio, and then on the back it was, this is your brain on drugs, and it was OU. And it, it made me laugh. It's because, pretty good. Yeah. It actually might be appropriate. OU I, it is... It actually might be true. OU is a party school uh-huh. where you happen to get a fantastic education. Yes, I agree I with that. I have never seen more academic support than what my daughter has at OU. Wow, We that's didn't have impressive. that at UCLA. Like, I had to, I had to right. hunt TAs and professors down in order to have time with them. Uh-huh. And I had to go to the math lab and, and you know, really fight hard to get 
hours from one of the tutors, but but she like they go out of their way to yeah. really make sure kids are in a so, position yeah, what, to succeed. What, what's interesting about this conversation is that I'm used to asking people questions. Mm-hmm. I'm not used to answering questions. So I would ask you a question. Your daughter's first year, right? Mm-hmm. And she's she happy? I think she's happy. You know, it's like it's a winding road. It's uh-huh. a river. But it, and Geraldo taught me something very important. What's that? Because I asked Geraldo one day. Yeah. How Good are, man, how isn't are, he? I, I love. I, I've I, always had a great time I with Geraldo. I always love yes. talking to him. He he is his hot takes. Were, also lives in Ohio. Yes. Uh, but Cleveland. I said, "How are you doing?" He said, "Let me tell you something." You're only as happy as your unhappiest child. A thousand percent. And I've so heard it as, before as from parents, my oldest sister. Yes. So as parents, what we try and do is you Make can't do it happy. for them when they're in college. And that's tough because yeah. it's much easier to swoop in and fix things. You have to let them do it and you have to allow them to find their own happiness, which when you're sitting on your hands, and I saw Jennifer Garner was talking about this recently. Yeah. Like her instinct is to be a mama bear and to fight and to help her kids. And she she's always thought that was helping her kids. And then she realized that she has to sit back and mm-hmm. allow them to True. find and their I, way. And I would argue somewhat profound. Yeah. And I would also argue maybe sometimes not easy. Yes. Right? For sure. Yeah. I mean, you found that out. Yes. I, I remember when when I left home, my mom knew that I was never coming back. She knew more than I did. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, you were I'll gone. be back. Yeah. yeah. She's like, no, that's yeah. it. Peace. <laughs> when my dad dropped me off at Miami University when I was 17, 18 years old, it was just my little sister and my dad. I said, okay, um, time to say goodbye. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Kennedy, I ran from that car. Wow. I was jacked up. I was yeah. I was ready to go, go into the next step. Yeah. So. And have you always been like that? Have you always I think so. been? You you take on the next thing because it's the uncertainty that holds people back. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, this is kind of silly, but it's true. Um, like grade school was kind of ah, uh, you know, some teachers liked me, some teachers hated mm-hmm. me. Okay, I get it. Fine, all right. Because uh, I was always the best behaved. Mm-hmm. But the morning I woke up, the first day of school in high school, I was, I was up, made my bed. I was out of there. Yep. I'm going to the school with a thousand guys. Wow. Okay. So Four it was different an all grades. All boys school. All boys school. Okay. A thousand guys, and they compete on everything. I'm okay with and that. And so long as that was the case, I was going to make sure that I was ready to compete with them. Good. And I tell my nephews that all the time. I said, "This, these, are, you try and embrace this." Yes, and and so. we have like we're shying away from competition. Like we're we're softening the edges on everything, mm-hmm. so no one gets their feelings hurt. And I think we might pay for that down the road. Okay. Well, for me, it was get up, get it done. And arguably, I don't think I've ever looked back. Arguably, that is a fantastic Cheers way to, to that, kid. To the, to, to the big guy. To, to the big guy <laughs> and the big handsome, which we are consuming, this mocktail. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. This is actually root beer. Yeah, it is. It's root it's beer. It's very, it's, very it's good root beer. Barbs. You ever have Barbs root beer? Yeah. B-R-G. Heck yeah. What is, did you have Big Red? In Ohio, because we, we had that in Southern Big Indiana, red cream soda. And, and it's it's not yeah. everywhere. But like uh-huh. when we would go visit my grandmother in Indiana, <laughs> some <laughs> strong root beer. <laughs> I I looked forward to Big Red. That's all I wanted. All but summer. you grew up in Seymour, right? Yes. So that's where my family's from. Uh huh. And so and then my parents moved to Oregon, but we would go back every summer and stay with my grandma. Got it. And that's all I wanted was to water ski and like if I could drink a two liter of big red while water skiing, uh-huh. that would like that would have been <laughs> heaven that's, for that, me. That's great. Yeah. So Seymour had a pretty good view of the eclipse. I know. Emily I mean, was in Indianapolis. You had totality. There. Yes. And Over then there, people's lives booming. were changed. Right. Where did you experience the eclipse? Uh, right out there on Fox Square. We okay. saw nothing. Yeah. I was out there with Martha. Yeah. It got a little dark. Yeah, it was. It got a little cool. They're like went... 90%. That that was not 90%. No, I it know wasn't. from 90%. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at estimating, pretty good with ratios. That was not 90%. So Martha and I are sitting there and go, you know, we'd have a much better chance of seeing this eclipse if we'd have a 44-story building in front of us. So what we should have done is gone down to the, the Intrepid on the Hudson River. That's where... Would have been a pretty good shot. Nate, Nate was Foy out was, there. Yeah. I don't even think his was that great. Anyway, my point is Seymour, yeah. Bloomington, Indianapolis, yes. your home, a 
A lot you were of people. Right in the so path. I went to Mom's weekend, flew into Columbus. A lot of people were there for the eclipse. Uh huh. So there must have been something in that zone. Yeah. There was there was totality. Did it adjacent. change your life? Nope. I I was ready for it. Yeah. Didn't change my life at all. No, I was really ready for it. I was open. <laughs> I, I had Fox News on, and I was going out to the terrace with the yeah. big dumb dog who was looking at the sky, and I was like, don't look at the sky. Oh, okay. I tried to put glasses on him. He wouldn't keep the glasses uh-huh. on. Their French bulldogs are not smart. Right. Did you get a picture? Oh, yeah. yeah of this. course you did, and you posted it, didn't you? No, I didn't post it. Oh! No, because uh, he doesn't like me to post him too much. I respect that. He's, uh, he's, he's shy. Oh. You can see the eclipse in his eyes. Cat. Yeah. Yes. It's not good. <laughs> How's he doing? He keeps bumping into walls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a liar. He's fine. All right, so so what's next for you? Um, I'm you gonna go have a, a conversation with the guy who's running for the U.S. Senate. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, two o'clock. Yeah, we'll see what he has to say. I've got to go to this little deal across the street at six o'clock okay, tonight. Okay, so it's it's what's all... next for me? You know what I just did, Kennedy? What? I know you love to snowboard. I do, but I didn't get there this year. I mean, neither did There's I. Too much going on. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I just went to the Arctic with the U.S. Navy. That was incredible. Uh, well, we, we haven't seen it yet. You only saw like five minutes of it. But what I saw, I love. Oh, you like it? Yes. It was, it was an amazing personal and professional experience. Yeah. We were there 72 hours. It was unlike anything I'd ever done before in my life. We flew into Dead Horse, Alaska, where when you look out the plane... You're just like, sir, can you please turn around? Because wow. nothing lives down there. Yeah. Change into our gear and flew about 220 miles north onto a moving ice flow. Ooh. And we met up with like 62 U.S. Navy sailors and scientists mm-hmm. who were studying a lot up there. And then the, I was cold, 50 below. Oof. I mean, come on. I've only been in that Brutal. one time. My right big toe is almost back. Oof. Almost all there. It's going to come back fully. Next day, we took a helicopter and went further north. And we met with a U.S. nuclear submarine, the USS Hampton out of That's San cool. Diego. So we climbed on board there, spent about 24 hours with those men. All, 100, all men, 150, not an integrated sub. There are integrated subs. This was not one of them. Just to learn how they live. And to understand that there is a commodity of space that mm. you will adjust to because you have to. You have no choice. And once you do, like your, your life goes from here to here to here to the width of this microphone. Yeah, you're basically sleeping and, in a coffin. Yeah, and you're 18 inches high. I slept for five hours. Very proud of myself. Nice. The showers are exceedingly warm because we are nuclear powered. Wow. As long as they have food, they can stay at sea forever because they're always generating power. Uh, it was an extraordinary experience that I loved going and seeing, and I don't know if I ever have to do it again. And were were they well adjusted? Is are there but psychological those guys, services? That's really interesting to me. Is that what you guys in the submarine? Yes. Um, the ice camp was just forbidden, you know. In the Arctic, it's it's ice. It's a sheet of ice. So when the wind blows, there's nowhere to hide. Mm-mm. Like, you can go in the tent, but honestly, the tent is just kind of... It's a suggestion. It's sweet. I mean, yeah. a week. We slept in all of our clothes, including our boots, wrapped up inside of two sleeping bags, pulled over our head, and you woke up every hour freezing. On the sub, um, you get to know these guys in a way where most of their family lineage is about the Navy. Yeah, my grandfather was on yeah. it. My father was on it. It goes back generations. The other side that I found was my life was a mess. I needed to get organized. And the Navy did it for me, and now I have this family. And they're at sea for three months at a time. Wow. They have no communication with the outside world once they're underway. They've got no use for iPhones. They read books, they sleep, they work, and they talk. Oh, my gosh. It was a whole different world, and I am absolutely thrilled that I was able to have that experience. Yeah, I I would be in awe of those people. Here's to the U.S. Navy. I can't wait to see more of it. A diggity to the USS Hampton. And to the Army. And the root beer. Mm -hmm. And to root beer, may it flow as always. Thank you, Bill Hammer. Mm, This has been... Pleasure. This has been Kennedy Uh, Saves the World. I'm going to give the rest of this to your producer. (laughs) I'm Kennedy. (laughs) Shout out. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network.